too. We're going to need you on set in a couple of minutes. Is it, everything OK? Oh, yes. Uh, it's just a minor side effect of the radioactive elements I've been messing with. Don't worry. Uh, well, I think you'll find radiation's invisible and also highly dangerous, isn't it? Uh, details, details. Now, if you don't mind, I'm just going to glue my teeth back in and I'll be right out. OK, lovely. You do that. You're the one with the Nobel Prize. OK, uh, see you shortly. Good afternoon and yo to all you young people out there. As an international superstar scientist, I've been pretty much everywhere on Earth and I know pretty much everything. See that huge smudge of green across the top half of the planet? Pine trees. And those green blobs across the south? Rainforests. Basically, like someone on a mad trolley dash, plants are all over the shop. And on top of all the plants on the land, there's the trillions and trillions of algae that live in the sea. Now, if you put every living thing on Earth together and weighed it, you'd find that over 90% of this massive weight is plants and fungi. Which means that animals account for just a measly 10% of living things. And that includes overweight whales, pregnant elephants, and people who eat chips for breakfast. Double E. And that was my brain dump. to see some elements explode in the hizzy house. Oh, uh, what is in those test tubes? Oh, just some radioactive radium I discovered in 1898. I mixed some phosphor with them and now they glow. Isn't that incredibly dangerous? Oh, no more dangerous than a lump of radium on its own. Isn't radium on its own incredibly dangerous? Who's ready to see some explosion? Make some noise! Yes. Okay. Look, I don't want to be a spoil sport, but speaking for the exposed brain contingent, uh, let's go easy on the explosions. Hmm? Right here, right now, I am going to show you something that nobody in this audience will ever forget. Yeah, just like the noble elephant, they never forget. Hang on, it's just a load of sand. <sighs> no, fool, these flares are the chemical reaction. They contain different metallic elements. When I light them, the metal particles will oxidize and omit light. Different colors will show depending on which metallic element I use. You know a lot about elements, but I thought you were more of an expert in radiation. Well, when you have won a Nobel Prize for both chemistry and physics, uh, this stuff is not so hard to wrap your head around. What are you waiting for? Let's dim the lights. And see some fire! <laughs> now for our first chemical reaction. Strontium. Wow, the reaction makes the colour red. Yes, the strontium has made it red. I love red. Let's have a potassium one. Oh. The potassium has made it go lilac. A very relaxing colour. Now one containing sodium. Yellow! <laughs> Mark, it's yellow! Wow! Yes, sir! <laughs> now we have some copper. Wow! <laughs> Scary! <laughs> that is blue. <laughs> awesome! They were all different colors. Yeah. Yes, the copper has turned it blue. Woo <laughs> okay, don't, don't all rush to help me. It only weighs a couple of tons. Bow down, you mentally puny worms, and rejoice in the splendor of the original, official, awesome, McTaggart patented Atom Analyzer. What does it do? Well, the clue's in the name. What? The original, official, awesome, McTaggart patented Atom Analyzer? Exactly. Everything on Earth is made of atoms, but different combinations of atoms make different things. To demonstrate, this machine will show you which atoms both you, a stupid human, and Bob, a strange robot, are made of. So, Mark, step inside. Good luck, Mark. Ah, the machine has found calcium atoms in your body. Calcium's in your bones and makes them hard. Without calcium, they'd be all spongy and floppy and useless. Iron. <laughs> I'm absolutely nailing this test. Getting everything right. 
Your body also contains iron, which is what makes your blood red in color. Carbon. Sorry, I must have uh, left a pencil on me or something ah, from earlier. Oh, Mark. Human beings are full of carbon, too. It's the main ingredient in fats and sugars, so the fatter you are, the more carbon you'll contain. Silver. Ah, that's interesting. Uh, you might not know, but tiny amounts of sulfur is what makes your bottom burp smell. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. I didn't think anyone would notice if I was in the machine. Silver. Yeah, sorry, admitting it made me nervous. That's disgusting. Right, Bob, your go. Let's see what you're made of. Bob time. This should be fun. Aluminium. As a robot, Bob is made up of many metallic elements. Aluminium, for example, is what fizzy drink cans are made of. Platinum. Ah, platinum. Now, this is a very rare metal, and that means it's very valuable. That's why wrappers wear necklaces made of platinum. They're showing off, just like I am. Where did you get that? <laughs> it must have cost a fortune. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Oh, pull yourself together, woman. Anemia. You're on camera. But, oh! <clears throat> Sorry, Professor McTaggart. Didn't see you there. Indeed. All ready for this week's demonstration? Oh, we certainly are, yeah. All we need is one human ear. I see. I think I might know where you can find one. Look, I've told you before, there's no way... That... Oh! Oh! Every time! Why always the head? Oh, stop complaining, Mark. It's no worse than a sudden, very painful injection. Oh, what can you see in there, Professor? Ah, uh, well, it's a little dark at present. If I just put up the monitor, I'll show you what we expect to see. Junior. Now, first, we should see the eardrum. Now, this is a thin little membrane which vibrates when sound hits it. And you see these tiny bones behind the ear, they pick up those vibrations, then travel to this spiral-shaped thing called the cochlea. Gloopy fluid in the cochlea helps turn these vibrations into nerve signals, which are then carried up to the brain. Can you turn the light on, please, Junior? Oh, thank you. Aha! You see? This is Mark's eardrum. Very good. Uh, perhaps we could make it vibrate a little. Uh, put on that music I gave you. Ah, there we go. Look at it go. Uh, you should have no trouble hearing that, Mark. You're loving this, aren't you? Of course I am. <laughs> Listen to that, sax. Well, mission successful, I feel. Let's put her in reverse and exit the... Oh! 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 Oh, maybe do it without the alarm? Yeah? Yeah, well, Mark, I'm really sorry, but we seem to be stuck in something sticky. Transferring the power to the boosters. Come on, you can do it! Oh. Whew, thank goodness we made it. What was all that about? Oh, nothing terribly major. We were just stuck in a slick of earwax. Earwax? Oh, get back in there and sort it out. No. No, no we can't do that. that. Oh, you need your earwax. It's got out again. Why don't we go back in? Yeah, I don't clean that. So yeah. my yeah, and if you turn the dial... Yes, you see, the pitch will get higher and higher until... What happens? I can't hear anything. Exactly. The pitch is too high for humans to hear. Only bats will be able to hear the sound now. <laughs> wow, that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Time now for us to go to... Ah, get them off me! I wasn't calling you lot. Turn it off! Turn it off! Sorry, mate, my bad. Ah! Ah! Another oh. thing about sound waves is they're able to bounce off smooth, hard surfaces, like ripples bouncing off the side of a swimming pool. Which is why, if you're in the right surroundings, it seems like your own voice is talking back to you as an echo, which can get a little bit confusing. Hello? Hello? Is there somebody?
Ressemble au Deezer Et ça ressemble au Deezer Yes I am here Yes I am here What is your name What is your name I asked you first I asked you first No, you didn't No, you didn't Stop copying me Stop copying me I am fed up of this Well, you started it Prepare yourself for an insane look out what they don't tell you in the science books From inner space to the universe We're on a case to face the worst It's icky and it's whiffy and it's yucky and it's squishy but we love it